Matt Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Yeah, the beginning of another, I'm sure, interesting week. What, in America? Aren't, yeah. Aren't they all interesting God. lately? They're all pretty interesting. And kind of a slow news year, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. There's nothing going on. Nothing. We'll try to make the best of it. Try to squeeze 15 minutes or so of fabulous entertainment into two hours of broadcast time. We'll see if we can. I yeah. don't know. That's a tall order, but we're going to give it a shot. Yeah. Actually, we've got a great show lined up. Uh, all kinds of really amazing things going on in this world. Uh, I, I love how the media is still trying desperately to get everybody who doesn't want to say this to say it. Just say it. Say Black Lives Matter. Say it. Say it. Say it. Just say the phrase Black Lives Matter. What difference does it make? Everybody knows that black lives matter. All lives matter. But it's so important for them to hear, for instance, Mike Pence say it, because he's really resisted it. And so John Dickerson over the weekend was trying to get him to say it. One thing protesters would like to hear is leaders say black lives matter. And so what? That would be my answer to him. So what? Protesters? Protesters want to hear me say it? I'm sorry. I don't. Cave in to protesters. Big deal. You won't say that. Why? Mm. But what, what I see in the leaders mm -hmm. of the Black Lives Matter movement is a political agenda of the radical left that would defund the police, that would... Leave uh, that out of it. Just the phrase. Monument. Leave that out of it. Just say the phrase. Just the oh phrase. Leave that out of it. Just say the phrase. <laughs> no, he's telling you why he... He won't say the phrase because you can't leave that out of it. It's important what he's saying here. That would that would press a a, a radical left mm -hmm. agenda that uh, and 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 support calls for the kind of violence that has beset mm -hmm. the very communities that they say that they're advocating for. The, but, thank you, I mean, sir. We, I, I've, I've literally met I've literally met with African American leaders. Uh, around this country and in in the national capital area who who made it clear to us they they want law and order uh, they they want peace in our streets so you won't say black lives matter so you won't say it <laughs> john i really no! believe that all lives matter whoa, okay. and whoa, that's, that's where like the heart the of the american word, people man. lies yeah seriously yeah. you say all lives matter now i know that is akin to saying the n-word it is <laughs> it is to the radical because left. Keith, what? no lives matter until black lives matter. However, oh. black lives have always mattered. So, so I guess we can go ahead and say all lives matter. I, so ridiculous. Is there a statue of Mike Pence? If so, let's tear it down. Oh, wow. I, any, anywhere there's a statue of Mike Pence, it's got to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As the, uh, Agreed. I mean, that's the only way we can do this. It's the only way. It is the only way. Mm -hmm. um, something they're trying to tear down right now. Uh, oh, my goodness. It's, they, they've run out James of James Woods yeah. uh, brought this to us. Oof. And, you know, he's conservative. And so now they've come, I guess, for the Garden Gnome. Oh, no. See, yeah. you knew they were going to get there eventually. And they the did. Get down if you're done. <laughs> Look. Look at that. There it goes. Oh, no. Don't do it. Oh my goodness! Don't it's do it. Come to that. Oh, careful! That's, that's the last straw. And you don't want to be under the garden gnome when it topples either, because no, you want some... you want the garden gnome if it's going to come down to come down safely. <laughs> and so I don't think they were safely doing that there. It didn't seem safe. No. <laughs> uh, man, that's uh, that's where we're at. That's a funny one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. <clears throat> also, we got a new bingo card for you this week. Yeah, we do. Pinned to the top of Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, starts in the upper left-hand corner with thumb up me on the socials. Probably be thumb up me on Facebook is where we usually use that. But mm -hmm. it's a storybook, man. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, talking about a chatty cashier. <laughs> Keith talks about baseball's return. Oof. Burr, I'm cold. It's cold, burr. Burr, I'm cold. It's cold. <laughs> Uh, that does that word does not mean what you think it means. Okay, that's almost a free square right now. Uh huh. Angel choir playing. Uh, so the audio of that, which sounds like this, of course. 
Oh, and of course for the other one. I don't think it means what you think it means. So that's it. Playoffs? Don't talk to me about playoffs. <laughs> These hands are not yours. They are my own. Aww. It's the actual phrase. Are they small? <clears throat> These hands are small, I know, but <laughs> they're not yours. They are my own, and I will not be broken. I think you might just have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pigeonhole him here. <clears throat> I think you might just have to play that bit at some point. Might have to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that this week. Okay. And when we explain things to Judy in Pennsylvania, because <clears throat> you know she takes everything literally. Sure does. So we got to be really careful there. Keith, make it stop. Oh, I'll say that within five minutes from now. Mary, Mary, don't you know me? Don't you know me, Mary? Uh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> That's the free square. The center square. Uh, good morning this morning. Good, good morning time. It's a beautiful morning for a morning show, so good morning this morning. <laughs> Jeffy, Jeffy saying, uh, that's good stuff. Combination skin. <laughs> shut up, Fauci. Fauci, shut up. Oh, the song? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so it would it would be something like, uh, I'd go a little something like this. <laughs> shut up, Fauci! Fauci, shut up! Yeah! 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 <laughs> so, uh, that one, of course, didn't count. Uh, he spoke again this weekend. I can't wait. Oh, till we, uh... he's... Great as always, isn't he? Uh, uh, so let's see. Uh, Joe being Joe, mm-hmm. the audio of this guy's a liar. Oh, Martin's got that. I say I this say, guy's a liar. There we go, Martin. There it got is. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, laugh track. <laughs> uh, now, now I just think of Bill Maher every time we play that, <laughs> sitting in his basement trying to get somebody yeah. to react to his jokes. <laughs> so bad. Uh, National Association of Realtors. Jeffy talks about chemtrails. <laughs> uh, that's CGI. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite word? Oh, the Nancy Pelosi. And, then I, and I said, that's easy. My favorite word is the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, of course. Uh, we might as well play a little bit of that because... Oh, oh gosh. Got some more uh, video of her this week. Ugh. She's so bad. Nancy Pelosi? Wait, are we talking about the same person? Yeah, yeah. So um, there, there's the Nancy Pelosi in Congress who sucks, and then there's the other Nancy Pelosi who sucks. Oh, okay. Which one is this? Time. What is your favorite? They ask, this? What- I love that. They ask her all the time. Nobody asks her what her favorite. They ask me all, all the time. What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? What's your favorite? And one time, what is what your, is your favorite, favorite word? word? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I said... And I said, my that, favorite word, favorite word that, that is, really is easy. easy. It's really easy. My favorite word is, is the word. The word. Uh, the and, word. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that's the one that sucks. That's the Pelosi that sucks, just for reference. Oh, okay. Appreciate and, it. And I, I don't know if you want to, her and Chuck Schumer, you know, they love George Floyd, right? And and, and they love all of the victims they do. of, of uh, they do. police violence. It's meant a lot to and, them. To... And so last week, they <clears> had <throat> that tender moment um, where they where they discussed um, the importance of those individuals in America. For the now. families of Floyd Taylor, who? Uh, George Taylor. George. I only will do that if you tell me that this legislation is worthy of George Kirby's name. George, Kir- uh, George, Kir- George Kirby. Kirby's name? So anyway, just to recap, she sucks. <clears throat> George Kirby. Did George Kirby die too? Um, I, I don't I know. Am, I know. I'm concerned now. I know now Kirby Puckett did pass about 10 years ago. Yeah, that's been a while. It's been a while. So I but don't know I that... didn't realize that George Kirby had died. Uh, yeah. What happened to him? I, I, Anybody I just, know? Was it COVID? Was, was it the COVID thing? Probably so. George. Dang it. She just she could have been a little more gentle about breaking that to oh. us because none of us had any idea George Kirby was even sick. Well, I mean, we should have known <laughs> since Wikipedia tells us of, a, uh, of, of, of an American... Um, uh, named George Kirby, who died in 1995. I mean, you, of course, know him as, as an American the, comedian, singer, and yes, actor, George Kirby. Of course. Of course. I mean, Nancy Pelosi just uh, just hadn't gotten around to... So 25 the, years later, the she eulogy realizes... finally comes out. Okay. All right. So there's uh, that. And then uh, it finishes up with bra- bras demands. Oh, yeah. We got to make some... Oh, you know what? Some of your demands... <clears throat> This will help you out on a Monday morning as the world is burning all around us. <clears throat> yeah, Nat- <coughs> Natalie Shira, a pad head, uh, noticed in a video that we posted last week, a couple weeks ago, um, how how you were really into the orange Sour Patch Kids. Oh! 
No and, way! And I guess, did you take a, a shine to the purple ones too? Yeah, I like the purple ones. So... She, oh, that is incredible. I didn't know you could get just one color. I but, didn't uh, either. Thanks, Natalie Shira, for... Uh, Thank you. Oh, that's outrageous. Taming the Look beast there. That. And his... Uh, Oh, that's... Power Patch Cravings. I'll be dead by tomorrow. Very, <laughs> very <laughs> specific. I will, be, I will not be able to stop eating these today. Yeah. And I will be dead by yeah, tomorrow. There's so many of you kind <laughs> Patheads have so sent us amazing. Sour Patch Kids. Yes. We have them here on the desk, on that desk, mm -hmm. down on the floor over there, <laughs> on the shelf back here. Yeah. In yep, every drawer. Underneath in, my desk, yeah, in it, my office. I think we've got some upstairs, so we, we keep a stash <laughs> in the kitchen. I mean, we're good. We're kind of stocked. And... Bra's demands have been uh -huh. met. Thank you all so much. 888 <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Speaking of COVID, <clears throat> L.A., Los Angeles, and Los Angeles County reaching critical levels, apparently, mm -hmm. in the COVID situation. I wonder why. It couldn't have had anything to do, I know this, with that with that protest in Hollywood where, I don't know, a million, billion, trillion people were lined <laughs> up in that street. Yeah, that was Joe, Joe Biden. Joe was Biden numbers. Those numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was 700 billion million. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I mean, look at that. And then you wonder, oh, why does Los Angeles have a problem now? No, it's got nothing to do with that, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Hmm. It looks. Are, are we that's, sure that's pure a, CGI, right? There. Okay. So that's that why. CGI. That okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. You know, and and Minnesota Public Radio also Crazy. published a, a statistic, uh, mm. a graph that shows over the last couple of weeks the numbers in the state of Minnesota have jumped. Huh. Uh, among a particular category. Twenty to twenty-nine year olds. Look have at that. Skyrocketed. Look at that. Look at it. Forty percent. Look at that. Wow. Based solely on cases. Confirmed by Minnesota Department of Health. So these are just on the on the people that have been tested. Uh, I wonder where the twenty to twenty nine year olds have been lately. Wow, out so, in the street, yelling and screaming, if, biting and scratching, <laughs> kicking and spitting and spewing and right. breaking things. If you're listening to the podcast or not seeing the visual aid here, um, every age category is down at a you know twenty percent or whatever level, and then up around forty percent, uh, the twenty to twenty nine year old just spike way away massive from all spike. the other um, graph lines. I mean, it's massive. <laughs> That's, but, uh, but that's, that's got nothing to do with the protests. Well, that that <clears throat> that fun fact was brought to you by the far right leaning, leaning uh, Minnesota Public Radio. <laughs> wow, <sighs> wow. Yep. There you go. Like we said, hey, Jeez. maybe that's a problem. Absolutely, it's amazing. gonna be a problem. And ta da, ta da. We, in fact. And so did everybody else, I'm sure. But we definitely predicted it when these started. And we said this is going to spike the COVID numbers. And then they're going to blame it on the mm -hmm. opening. And that's exactly, exactly what, happened. what has happened. It's exactly what's taken place. And we all saw it coming. Uh, have you noticed the dust? I really haven't. The big dust yeah. storm that supposedly have blown in from Africa. Yeah, where I live, way out in the boonies, you can see for miles and miles. And do you see the haze uh, yes, of yes, the dust? Absolutely. Do oh, you? oh, oh, it's intense. In fact, I the, the sky it. is. A, I think yesterday that the dust particles caused some cloud development and uh, eventually some rain and uh, hmm. storms out near me. Okay. Um, because I'm an amateur meteorologist, so that's my theory. Sure. But it, you know, it it's definitely been hmm. weird out out west. Yeah. Uh, we got this uh, from Cred. Cred Justable? Some guy. Yeah. Just a guy. Awesome. I always wondered what it was like to live during the times of the Civil War. Spanish flu, Great Depression, Civil Rights Movement, Watergate, and the Dust Bowl. <laughs> Not all at once, mind you, but, you know, beggars, choosers and all. <laughs> this guy's a yeah, great we got tweet. It. We got it all. Got it all. <laughs> Isn't that, that's amazing when you think of it like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all happening at the same time. At the time. same time. But yeah, I'm surprised you didn't... Um, I mean, I don't know if you got outside much this weekend, but yeah, the, the dust was really <clears throat> obvious. You know how... So it, so it came in, right? It came in through the Gulf of Mexico, mm -hmm. and then it came up through Texas in the southeast. And now, if you... It, the, the images are just incredible. It hit that, um, that jet stream, and now it's like it's headed back 
I guess, to Africa. I don't know. It's wherever the jets. Am I allowed to say that phrase? Can I say that? Is it, the, the dust from Africa is now mm-hmm. is now headed back. There. Are you a racist? I, it sounds You're like blaming it, the I'm dust just, on Africa. No, I'm, no, I'm, no. I think the, I think the jet stream. <laughs> he, you heard it, America. No, the jet stream. Keith racist. Malinak just blamed the dust on Africa. No, I think the. <laughs> I can't believe well, it's it. from the Sahara Desert. The blatant, blatant racist that's where, racism. That's where it came from. The racismness. I think the jet stream is the racist. The jet stream is the one sending it back to Africa right now as we speak. I didn't do anything. And by the way, it happens every year. The dust oh, really? comes from Africa. And it only year. makes the news because it's the year 2020 now. Yeah, and it's a little bit worse than it has been, I guess, in, mm. in the last 50 years. And it usually goes, this is an amazing thing. And this all happened by accident. Keep in mind. Keep in mind just some explosion happened everything spun into a circle and then four billion years later we got we have what we have uh so just pure coincidence uh uh-huh. that the uh silt that they lose every year in the amazon is replaced almost exactly from the dust in the sahara that floats over the atlantic every single year so i mean is that an incredible I mean, it's that. That's amazing. That sounds almost like intelligent. Almost like it was it? In, in, supposed to be that way and planned like that. I mean, I guess. Isn't it? Right. Yeah. It it's could just be, you know. Interesting. Just a. Just, yeah. Just I mean, it's just a pure coincidence, obviously. Every year. Right. <laughs> it just luck, so happens that every year. Luck of the draw. We luck out. We luck out every single year. It's amazing. So say that again. All of the. All the, the silt, silt that is washed away by the rain. Displaced. Uh-huh. Displaced and stuff by the rains in the in the jungles okay. of the Amazon is replaced by the Saharan dust That's that awesome. floats over the. Uh, almost to the speck of sand. It's almost exactly what it needs every year. It's amazing. It's really a, a cool that. fact, yeah. It's really cool. Had this uh, sent to us by a pathead. This meme, white privilege, <laughs> the privilege of being called racist by other people who see nothing else about you except the color of your skin. I can't even say it. It's just too... What? It's too much. What? It's too brilliant. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Because you don't know, <clears throat> you don't know what white people have been through. Thank you. You know how many white people have been through absolutely awful childhoods and upbringings and have overcome that. Yeah, and and just think of this: <clears throat> and when you see somebody on the street or or a coworker or someone like that walking through your neighborhood, you have no idea what's going on in that person's life. Right. You have no idea right. what their day has <clears throat> been like. You could have been abused. They could have been bullied. Anything. They could have been discriminated against by others. You don't. You don't have any idea. Well, I mean, you have. Well, an you idea. can't be discriminated against when you're white, right? But if you're exactly, <laughs> if you're white, you know that everything has been perfect from the minute they were hatched until this moment in time. Right. Right. If you're white, it's your privilege to have a perfect, carefree life. Yes. Yeah, and everything was given to you. Everything right. you have currently Correct. was given to you. So I guess I should have said, when you see someone in your neighborhood or a coworker or someone you pass on the street mm-hmm. that isn't white, you have no idea the kind of trauma that they're going through. That's right. In their life. That's right. And for and when you see whiteies, you know it was just handed to them on sure. a silver platter. Then you're just like, oh <laughs> gosh, I can't even look at you. You're white. It's always amazing to me. My parents, uh, between them, had four jobs when I was growing up. Four. My mom did oh. two. She babysat during the day, and then she worked from three to eleven. Wow. Three in the afternoon to eleven o'clock at the hospital every night. Wow. And my dad. So you're, you're, my dad was a telephone foreman, and and then at night he was a janitor at a local bank. Wow. When did they sleep, man? Uh never. Like just for a few hours every night. So and the max they ever made with all four jobs was twenty eight thousand dollars a year. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like white people haven't struggled. They don't know, they can't relate to anybody else's plight. Uh, They went through tough, tough times. My mom was on her own from the time she was 12 years old. And my dad, uh, probably before that, they went through tough times. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, They didn't have things handed to them. And neither did their kids. So, you know, it's, it's irritating. Wait. It's irritating. Hold on, I'm just... I'm just doing the math here. You're one of their kids. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and nothing was handed and, to me. But you're white. Yeah, I know. That, that is true. Okay. That is true. 
Spinning some tails. Uh huh. <laughs> Got this from uh, Ghost Patriot One. I was disappointed to hear that local country fairs are being canceled. I just thought that anybody brave enough to make a to in, enough to ride a roller coaster put together thirty times a year by a meth head with a rusty <laughs> screwdriver and duct tape could give a crap about COVID. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good so they're point. canceling these fairs where it's risky as it is uh, to go to them. I don't think the COVID thing really <laughs> plays in. <laughs> All right. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. When are things going to get back to normal? I know. That's why that's why I wanted to bring this video into the middle of all of this. Uh Christy Bell, who <laughs> I'm sure she's a liberal and and in fact she did something just last week, I think, that was irritating. But this <laughs> is uh this is fun. It was her birthday, I think early last week or the week before or something, and she was she's sitting there with very little makeup on, kind of a brave I mean, she looks good anyway, but still. She, it's her birthday, and her kids are sitting there, and her her husband is in the area, and she asks her kids how old they th- they think she is. How old do you think I'm turning? She's six. Um, how old do you think I'm turning? How old is she? Six. six. How old? Sixty-three. How old do you think I'm turning, man? <laughs> Eighty-nine. Good guess. Okay, Dad, how old do you think I'm turning? Don't do it, Dex. Don't do it. Save that somewhere in the middle of those two guesses. So seventy-one. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I, think, I think you're turning. Are you done with this, Dex? Twelve. Twelve. I'm turning thirty-nine. <laughs> I love that. It's a well, well-preserved eighty-nine-year-old. Yeah, uh, that's great. That's it's funny. Our, that's an awesome video. Yeah. <laughs> Just to take the edge off for a half a second. Oh, we got the coolest dog in the world, too. Let's oh, throw that in. Oh, a video on a Monday? Are you let's, kidding me? Let's throw it in. And Keith is yeah. in love with this hey. dog. Hey, boy. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I love that dog, man. Look, he's got bling, sunglasses, leaning out the window, does a little cool look back. What's up? <laughs> uh, you liked it. Oh, it was great. It's great. But that, that well, it's not. It's, you know, it's it fine. wasn't the coolest dog in the world. Uh, no, we probably see better dogs than that. You sure? But I liked it. It okay. was good. All right, well, he liked it. it. Good. That's, that's a good. Yeah, story. that's all right. Okay, good. Uh, what I don't like is the fact that apparently Russians are offering bounties oh, to Afghans gosh. to kill U.S. soldiers. This is something <clears throat> I haven't heard the president talk about. I'm not not sure why. Uh, But American intelligence officials concluded that a Russian military intelligence unit secretly offered bounties to Taliban-linked militants for killing coalition forces, including targeting American troops amid the peace talks to end the long-running war there. U.S. concluded months ago that the Russian unit, which has been linked to assassination attempts and other covert operations in Europe... Intended to destabilize the West or to take revenge on turncoats had covertly offered rewards for successful attacks last year. Wow. Not good. Not good at all. What do you do if you're the president? It's a good question. Because, I mean, do you retaliate? And if so, how? So we lose troops to attacks. Mm -hmm. We figure out it's the Russians that paid Taliban fighters to carry out those attacks. Yep. And I'm sure they justify it in uh, the Mujahideen sound familiar to you Americans. Yeah. You help them kill Russians, right? Yeah, this is this is one of the many reasons Stuff. why I would never want to be the president of the United States. Of course, another really reason difficult. would be just the year 2020 alone yeah. is reason enough to not want to be. But man. Well, okay. and, and anytime you're a uh, right-leaning president, you're just going to get nothing but hardship from the, from the mainstream media. And you're going to hear that. Well, I mean, you're 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 Putin's lapdog anyway. Right. And this but, is. And yet, if you take decisive right. action, what are you a warmonger? Then you're a warmonger. I mean, you can't. And you're putting American lives at risk. <laughs> oh, really? We're going back to the Middle East to fight? Really? Uh huh. I thought you were doing a drawdown. I thought you were bringing home the troops. That's what you said you were going to do. Yeah, there's. A, it's a no-win situation for him. These guys who have been snuggling up to Putin forever, these Democrats. Remember the reset? 
I, <laughs> that was a whole Democrat debacle. You got it wrong. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, that. so Hillary, Secretary of State, one of her first trips goes over to Russia to, to try to cool things down between yeah. uh, the Obama and Putin administration. I wanted to uh, present you, which represents what uh -huh. President Obama and Vice President Biden and I have been saying. Do it, say it. We and that want is to reset, reset our relationship. And <laughs> so we will do it together. <laughs> we worked hard to get the right Russian word. Do you think you get, we got it? You get the drunk. But you get the drunk. Which means overshare. <laughs> well, we won't let you do that to us. I, I promise. I mean, that said so much at oh. the time. It says so much now. It says okay. overcharge. <laughs> I love the fact, first of all, that they're doing this bullcrap symbolic gesture that was completely meaningless. Secondly, she says we worked really hard to get just the right Russian translation. <laughs> you got it wrong. Okay, so you all, all your efforts to get it right and you still couldn't get one? One? Russian word right? One. That's unreal. Uh, seriously. That is unreal. It would have been better if she just went over there with like a Staples easy button. Yeah. <laughs> because that's, I mean, it, what, how embarrassing is that? We had Google back then. Didn't we have Google Translate? I bet we did. And But they worked really hard to get just right. You got it wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. How embarrassing. I mean, the Democrats have been an embarrassment when it comes to foreign policy from the beginning. When it comes to anything, but... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Jeez. <laughs> uh, uh, Kevin found this particular stat as we uh, clean up some of the uh, uh, tweets from over the weekend. Something you've read nowhere. Hmm. For every COVID-19 death these states have registered, this number uh, is the recovered cases. Wow, look at this. New York, one death, two recoveries. New Jersey, one death, 2.2. Texas, one death, 38.7 recoveries. See, good things happen when you don't shove your COVID patients into nursing homes. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the, the, the moral of that story. Well, you got to be a genius to figure out that you shouldn't do that, though. I should be a governor, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, yeah. My goodness. I, even so, they're, I mean, our governor's kind of freaked out right now about I the COVID. I don't care for this. I don't care. He's <clears throat> backtracking on stuff. It's Big not time. good. I don't know if he's seen a number that scared the crap out of him. I don't know what happened here, really, but he's he's really just freaked out. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them reinstitute the the lockdown, which we well, we kind of have. I guess what bars are now back yeah, to being closed. That's true. And, we've uh, we've like that. taken some steps already to shut things down again. And I guess I guess since there's a story in the pile there of a hospital administrator that says, well, one thing that we do is and most hospitals i think in texas do is that all of these elective surgeries have been on backlog because of covid right mm -hmm. and so they're now testing everybody that comes in for this and so if you have you know the antibodies or something like that then i guess you know it's, it's counted as like oh look oh another case another case you know oh wow so so if you've already had it but you're not symptomatic out. yeah yeah and i think it just it's huh. making it look bad anyhow so I don't like it. I don't, I don't like the direction that Texas is going here. And um, it just... No, I don't either. It's not good. I I don't either. Um, and, you know, nobody's even bringing up the fact that the protest had to have something, a lot to do with this. Mm -hmm. More so, way more than the reopening, the safe reopening of people going back to work uh, or mingling a little bit at the grocery yeah. store. Everybody's got masks on. <laughs> I can't, I cannot with the masks. That's tough. It I really cannot. Is. We've got some mask themed stories later, which by the way, um, I I actually Jim Clyburn, you know how he had that goofy mask last week and it was almost like a welder's, you know, mm -hmm. just had the little thing down. Yeah. I ordered some of those. Did you? Yeah, cuz I mean, look, it it'll it'll calm people down. They'll see that I'm wearing something and they yeah. will freak out, but yet I'll still be able to breathe. And the thing I don't understand, I don't have COVID-19. So if I'm not wearing them, you can't get it from me. So why are you so freaked out if I don't have a mask on? Our society is Bizarre. insane, man. Mm -hmm. Great to have you with us. 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. It's amazing how uh, COVID-19 has come back so strongly in the news. Man, now it's worse than ever, I guess. Uh 
you know, during the protests, during the gatherings of people to smash and destroy, uh, it wasn't even an afterthought. Hmm. It wasn't so much as considered. But now, well, oh my gosh, the reopenings of the economy have just killed so many people. Well, it's time to bring back the cure, which is uh, more rioting. <sighs> yeah, right. If we had that, the media be wouldn't good. be focused on the uh, COVID thing. Very true. They'd be telling us about the 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 uh, beauty that is rioting in the streets. Well, there's a time for rioting. There's a time and place, you know, and some, some people are just making unplanned donations. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> they didn't plan to donate every item in their store uh, to somebody who just smashed the windows and... <laughs> And rummaged and villaged and pillaged through their store. Why not? I don't know. I right. don't know why they didn't plan it. They should have. You mean, know, they probably should have. I mean, do they have something against George Floyd then? <clears throat> probably. You need to be donating yeah, in the name probably, of George Floyd. Probably racist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we should cancel them. <laughs> you can see uh, we have the wheel of cancel now. Yes, yes we do. We have the wheel of Cancel! Spin the wheel! Oh, really? You want me to spin the wheel? Uh, spin the wheel. Let's, let's oh, find okay. out where it lands up. And okay, we'll... so we've got corresponding numbers here. Yep. Right? Okay. Yeah. we got some stories here. All right. So uh, Correspond we're getting... to the numbers. So story number story four, Pat. number four. Pick, All right. Uh, story number four to share with us. In our... Story number four wheel is actually a good one. This is a good cancel. Oh. Good on the wheel cancel. of... Cancel! <laughs> Princeton is removing Woodrow Wilson's name yes. from the school. We've been asking for this forever. Thanks for joining us, I'm Liz. glad they finally, they finally realized mm-hmm. uh, that he is dude. a flat-out racist, in addition to many other things. <laughs> yeah. But one of the worst was that he was a racist. Princeton University's board has just voted to remove the name of uh, Woodrow Wilson from the university's prestigious School of Public and International Affairs due to his racist thinking and policies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you. Mm. Friday's statement by the Board of Trustees was shared with the Princeton community. On my recommendation, the uh, Princeton president said, the board voted to change the names of both the School of Public and International Affairs and Wilson College. As you'll see from the board's statement, the trustees concluded that Woodrow Wilson's racist thinking and policies make him an inappropriate namesake for a school or college whose scholars, students, and alumni must stand firmly against racism Mm -hmm. in all its forms. Yeah, I mean, thanks for catching up with the rest of us. Finally! Oh, you want me to spin it again? Sure. The wheel will cancel? Huh? Uh, Three? Yeah, number three. Oh, look at that. That's that's tricky here, huh? Uh, Number three. (laughs) Oh, okay, um, it's about time because I've heard a lot of people uh, be hurt by this particular episode of the Golden Girls. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't take it. I can't. Actually, they're not even. I don't think they're even doing blackface, right? No. They just get a mud face or whatever, they a go, mud bath, they go or to a spa. Yeah, and they get a mud treatment. Yes, make it stop. Please, I, I, no more cancel. Can we cancel the cancel culture? I wish. So yeah, so so Hulu has removed from their library the Golden Girls Library, which of course is spectacular, <laughs> isn't it? Though this one's going to really hurt because I can't get enough of the Golden Girls. Thank you for being. Yeah, a there they friend. are. Okay, that's not blackface. <laughs> Please stop. I don't think they said anything about it, did they? Yeah. In the about it being blackface? I don't know. I mean, I have to. I, I can't go back and watch it now. To, well, to, right. to remember, because uh, Hulu took it off. I but, didn't like that show when it was on. I whoa. certainly don't like it now. Whoa, whoa. So, would I, should I care? No, but it's just stupid. I, it's just ridiculous that we're doing this. Golden Girls are fine, by the way. I'd like to go on the record of saying that. You liked it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was good right. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You were too young at the time to know That's any better. That's not true. Oh, oh, to know any better? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. To know any better, but I, yeah. I did watch it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Mm-hmm. But what were you, Eight? Uh, no. When did Golden Golden Girls? What were the years involved? Got to be late eighties to mid nineties ish, early. Uh, uh let's see here. Eighty five for seven seasons, so eighty five, ninety two, somewhere in there. So okay. that put me at the uh, nine to sixteen range there ish. So sure. So you're right close. in that demo. Yeah, right in that demo. Mm-hmm. Didn't they move to like a retirement community or something? They moved somewhere. I, I know they moved. 
That's when, whenever a show moves, and I don't even know if this is accurate on the Golden Girls. Then it's done. It's, uh, yeah, when you it's move done. the location or when you, you move, or you bring in the cousin, the, tw- <laughs> oh, the eight, eight year old cousin, the obnoxious kid that won't stay away from your house, and they're just a neighbor, they live down the street, then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's or, over. Well, you make the point about the Brady Bunch. As soon as, as soon as Cindy grows up, right, they mm-hmm. have to bring in Oliver, Oliver. and it's all over. But no, <laughs> no pun intended. But seriously. Uh, yeah, yep. That's true. Yeah. It is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm there was a, there's also a thing when... Who is that actor? Uh, handsome guy, uh, you know, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Every time he came onto a show, like Love Boat, then he came onto, <laughs> like, Happy Days, then he was part of, I don't know, something else. Really? <laughs> Cheech and... Cheech and Chung. <laughs> I don't know. Hothead revival. Oh. Anytime he that came like on fun. the show at the end, it was over. You, you knew. knew they had like six episodes left. Oh, and no. then I forget what like the, the guy's name was. The Grim Reaper of actors. <laughs> Your somebody, show is over. Maybe somebody will tell us on Twitter what his name was. But <laughs> it was it was, it was was absolute universal truth. When oh, he wow. came on the show, your show is done. Uh, <laughs> 888-933-93. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. I, I love this Washington Post fact check of the president the president uh has been caught in a bald face lie and he keeps saying it okay but you're a right-wing host from what i understand right yeah so you should probably be covering up and move on to the next story Don't be no doing- i'm not going to i'm not going to i'm going to we always say we're going to lead with our mistakes okay here the president is clearly lying <laughs> he says among the 20 cities with the most violent crime per capita they're all Democrat. <laughs> wow. Liar. That's, a, that's a bold claim right there. <laughs> Only 19 of the 20 are Democrats. Oh, the see? other one what? is an independent. <laughs> what a maroon. Wow, what a oh, liar. Wow. You're right. I'm wow. glad you I'm glad right? you brought this up. That had to be. It had, that to, had be. to be exposed. Yeah. It did. Uh, and I'm sorry, audience, but that's the way it is. Only 19 of the 20 cities that are the most violent <laughs> and dangerous are run by Democrats. The headline from the Washington Post, <laughs> Democracy Dies in Darkness, says, Trump keeps claiming that the most dangerous cities in America are all run by Democrats. Well, they aren't. <laughs> no, one Ooh. of them is run by an independent. You got him. Good. Dead to rights. <laughs> Dead to rights. <laughs> That's so amazing. I mean, and, and, and their own graph that they, that they use betrays them because they, they put it up there. It didn't print up properly. But, I mean, they even show, they, they say, they make the argument with something like, um, well, to blame it on the population, uh, that's where Democrat cities are. And, uh, and then their graph to support their claim is that here's the rate of deaths per 10,000 people. Well, then it doesn't matter what size city it is. Right. They're the highest per 10,000. <laughs> So it could be Helena, or it could be New York City. Oh, how did Helena not make that? That I don't was know. an oversight. Yeah, mean streets, oversight. man. Right? <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Washington Post, you're trying too hard <clears throat> and you're failing. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, they're just the, they're just, you know, the propaganda arm for the, administ- for the Democrats. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's pathetic. Yeah, and it's also it's pathetic, pathetic that the president of the United States would lie like that so egregiously. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, uh, sir. Fortunately, we even called him out. Yeah, yeah. Because that was too aggressive. Again, top 20 most go. dangerous cities, violent crimes, mm-hmm, right? According mm-hmm. to FBI statistics, uh, 19 of the 20. Not 20 of the 20, Mr. President. Just 19 of the 20. And then that other one is run by an independent. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was That's funny I stuff right it. there. I mean... As they're crafting their defense for Democrats, <laughs> don't they look at it and say, uh, "Maybe we just leave this one alone." Let's not. Let's not run this. Let's article. not run it. I mean, I see you pitching, right? Uh, whatever. Uh-huh. What's the author's name? Uh, Philip Bump. Hey, Phil. Uh, let's let that one go, huh? No. Philip Bump. I'm going to prove him wrong. No. Why don't you? My just... gosh, it's not an accurate statement. Tell you what, I'm not going to run this one to print. So why don't you enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Incredible. Oof. I mean, it's incredible. 888 also at uh, Pat Unleashed on Twitter. We got some older veterans uh, stepping in to defend some monuments now. Uh, this is amazing. Um, yeah. 
This is where we're kind of touching that the these patriots are gathering. Somebody's got to stand up for these statues that are getting torn down and our history getting removed. And, and vets are doing it. <laughs> you would hope they won't be attacked, but uh, you have any confidence oh, they won't be? The mm. Now you want the cops. Now you want the cops, they say. <laughs> <laughs> That is so yep. great. Yeah, now they want the cops, now right? They now the they cops. want to be protected uh, from the mean 70-year-old veterans. <laughs> God bless Jeez. them. Jeez. Uh, speaking of which, a police officer uh, uh, was talking about what happened to him, I think, on Friday. Him and his unit were called out to defend a, a group of protesters. Check this out. Here's what he had to say. So I come in this morning, and we're informed <laughs> there's going to be a protest to... Um, defund the police well that's fine i like protests mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. except for they requested a police presence you know uh-huh. for their safety <laughs> at right. a defund police event unreal uh, i do not <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's unreal it really is. Okay, I, it is in well, floor. yeah. I, I don't think it means what you think it means. Meanwhile, uh, the Minneapolis City Council voted 12 to nothing to abolish pol- their police department after the death of uh, George Floyd. It's unanimous. 12 to nothing to abolish the police in Minneapolis. Okay, well, what is the alternative? What are you going to do instead? Well, social workers, right? I thought that's what we've determined. <laughs> We're going to call people to come down and. Yeah, and just mediate yeah if you got a problem who are you gonna call social workers i don't know they'll fix it i I mean the the society is collapsing in front of our eyes so what is that was the what was the uh phrase that i read in the federalist in that article a a healthy society with momentum uh builds monuments to their heroes a sick society doesn't and a dying society tears them down. And huh. that sort of seems like where we are right now. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this goes to the voters <clears throat> in November about the police. I'm pretty in sure. Minneapolis? Yeah. Pretty sure that's the next step. If they vote the police out of existence, good luck. I mean, you're on your own. You, you, just, you can't be any more butt stupid than that. Yeah, we don't need any police around here. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's see what happens then. Hopefully, it'll take it'll take effect right at January 1st, and you just dissolve the police, and they, they go and get different jobs, and, and then you just, you're on your own with no gun because you don't believe in guns. Gun ownership is evil. So you just hope everybody is on their best behavior from then on. Well, and I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure, sure they will be. Of course. Right? It's the police that have made everybody go crazy. Mm-hmm. So everything would be fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, man, I just, I've, uh, I've, I've lost all hope, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It's really hard to be hopeful right now. Uh, that's why Glenn's special this Thursday, mm. July 2nd, is so important. Uh, he's kind of calling it Restoring Hope. I don't know, for whatever reason, he seems hesitant to call it that, but uh, it seems like a really good name of it. Name for me. Okay. Um, and so we'll see. He's trying to restore hope is what he's trying to do with it. So uh, make sure you see this special uh, 8 o'clock. I believe 8 o'clock Thursday night, July 2nd. Okay. It's our 4th of July presentation this year. Uh, yeah. This this was sent our way from a pathead. <clears throat> uh, these are the words of a black woman. Tiziana Skinner writes... <clears throat> If the police was after every black man, you know how many opportunities they missed? The many times the police came for my brother and didn't kill him? Plenty of moments where he put himself out there, clearly needing to be arrested. Plenty of times he threatened them and speak bad language to them. That alone would be good enough reason to defend themselves by shooting or killing him, but they didn't. This is Harper Woods Police, East Point Police, I think some of everybody. They even drove him home after he caused a scene one day. They didn't belittle him. He's 24 years old this year, and he's still alive. 
if they were after all black people's lives, it would just be a new day. There would be no protests, riots, because it'd be the same thing, uh, the same thing, different, same thing, different day. Just like blacks killing blacks, same mm. thing, different day, which is why there are never any ro- riots or protests for that. Wow, yeah. Again, so much more powerful when it comes from the black community mm-hmm. than when it comes from us. Yeah, yeah. And she talks about, you know, these killings, black on black crime. Uh, fun stats for you. Just, uh, just, just digest these. In <clears throat> Chicago, um, over the weekend, 112, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is New York City, 112 injured or killed in 83 shootings over nine days. That's over nine days in New York City. In Chicago, just over the weekend, 59, uh, and then uh, 15 are dead. 59 people shot and 15 wow. people dead just over the weekend. And the weekend before, it was 104 people shot, 14 dead. And no Black Lives Matter presence, as far as I know. Yeah. I don't hear them yelling and screaming about what's going on in Chicago or New York or Philadelphia or Detroit or Washington or Baltimore or New Orleans. All, by the way, Democrat run. But we don't need a police presence in these cities. Mm. No. I mean, police people, make it so much worse. Obviously, people are policing themselves just mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Mm. Really something else. Yeah. So another 15 killed over the weekend yeah. in Chicago. 59 shot, 15 dead in Chicago. And how many in New York? Uh, over nine days, 83 separate shooting instances, uh, 112 injured or killed. I don't know how many deaths we've got in New York City yet. So violence in New York has skyrocketed. They had that city pretty well under control. Uh, Not so much. Well, when you put a Marxist in charge, things tend to unravel. Welcome to it. 888-900-3393. Also at uh, Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Huge deal, of course, uh, coronavirus new cases in the past week versus previous weeks. Oh, they're really trying to scare the crap out of us now. Mm. They want to go back to lockdown so badly in the media. Coronavirus cases soar across the U.S. as warning signs grow. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Uh, If you're not wearing a mask, you, of course, are a mass murderer. And uh, we can't have that. So we're going to have to put you in prison. Pretty soon, if you don't wear a mask. If you don't capitulate, start wearing a mask everywhere you go. Uh, even to bed. Even to bed. Wait, when? what if you sleep alone? Yeah, well, that doesn't matter because eventually that you open a window or you open the door, that air leaks out what into if, somebody else's area. Like if you're on lockdown in your yeah, house by uh-huh. yourself all day, you should have a mask on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Driving around town, have a mask on. It's a little strange. <laughs> There's been reports uh, all over the nation, at least a couple, uh, you know, that that I can verify the location. And everything is that um, police attributing um, some of these uh, fatal accidents, car crashes, to people wearing masks while they were driving and passing out. Or yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. Good times. Aye, aye, Don't aye. be wearing a mask while you're driving down the road, especially by yourself. Yeah. Or with a family member that you live with. Silly. It's dumb. Make it stop. Uh, Tyler Morgan tweets, um, but did Keith bless the rains down in Africa? Talking about the Saharan dust cloud that's coming over. (laughs) Keith saw. Did you you bless the rains down in Africa? Asking for a friend. Just referencing that song is uh, racist. Racist. Okay, Toto. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simple-minded American, the Saharan dust gets around more than Pico the shark does. Yeah, <laughs> has gone actually further, I think. Yeah. Uh, also, I've seen your hernia tweets. Wow, congrats on all those Sour Patch candies. Yeah. I'm totally amazed that you have not even that you have not even one when Jeffy yeah. is in the studio. Yeah, there was a discussion on Twitter late last week. I guess you know Jeffy um, wanting to partake in the devouring of said Sour Patch Kids. Couldn't find them that day. I don't know where they went. Oh, you couldn't? No. That's what it is? You just yeah, can't couldn't find, find them. them. Shoot. Could not find them anywhere. Just the timing on his uh-huh. request. It's just bad not... timing. Mm-hmm. Nursing home refugee. Uh, so just to be clear, contracting COVID is still automatically a death sentence? Yes? Okay, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> I died. Yeah, I mean, it's a po- you've got like a .55% chance. So it's like 55 <laughs> One hundredths of one percent 
chance of death. Huh. Yeah, yeah. How can you like those odds? <laughs> and that's if you get it, right? Or Yes. Okay. If you have it, you've got a 0.55% hundredths of 1% chance. Okay, because I, I found a stat this weekend. I'm trying to find it scrolling through. Uh, let's see. The stat I found was 0.0003% of Americans. Oh, that seems a little lower. Oh, okay. Di- With, die. That's overall. From, yeah, right? yeah. overall okay. population from COVID. But let's be sure to mm-hmm. destroy our economy and kill people in other ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. here it is. 0.0003% of the population has died. Mm-hmm. Um but meanwhile, I mean, we've got we've got stories of how, like, UNICEF warns lockdown could kill more than COVID nineteen, as model predicts, one point two million child deaths. You know, um, it talks about uh, global cancer surgeries postponed or canceled, mm-hmm. backlog of almost a year now. I mean, the, people are going to die from these lockdowns in mass more so than the virus itself. You just want people to die. I just want people to die. Let's see, billions. Are out of work and millions of kids could die from coronavirus economic fallout. I mean, just of course, uh, absolutely, that's true. We're committing suicide. From Jeffy's 18 Spoons, Pat and Keith, why don't you share the wealth? I mean, at some point, you've got enough Sour Patch Kids. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember Jeffy's name being on any of these envelopes, <laughs> any of these uh, boxes that have arrived. <laughs> uh, all right, let's play this. You know, we've talked about this many times. Sometimes Bill Maher is the most uh, agonizing person Correct. on the face of the planet. He's on both ends of the spectrum. Other times he nails things mm-hmm. dead to rights. Yeah. But here, th- can you do him a favor though for this? Because mm-hmm. you know he's in his parents' basement doing whatever his little show thing. And uh, did he do it without any I don't laughter? Think he, yeah, no loud. It's pretty dry. So you might mm, want to interject maybe. with some laugh tracks if you ever think it's. Uh... Here's what he says yes. about whites speaking out against racism. That's good. That was good. That was real good. That actually was really good. It was. Yeah. Thank you, Bill, for uh, having a modicum of common sense every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And he's right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you put up that black square. If you've already taken it down, if you ever take it down, you are obviously a racist. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. It's just, it's bizarre. It's so ridiculous that... Now let's spin, spin the wheel of uh, cancel again. Let's oh, see who oh comes really? up. Okay. Yeah. What, what numbers have we done so far? Uh, I don't know, but. Uh, oh. Did we do already do one? Hold Did on. we do one? Two. Two. Okay, All right. Two. What's story number two? Wheel of cancel. That's good stuff. That's yeah. Martin, you're playing that. Nice. Hmm. Ah, yeah, keep that around for the wheel of cancel Crank theme. It up, man. I, I like this. <clears throat> uh, L'Oreal <laughs> is going to remove the word whitening Make it stop. from its products. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Heaven help us. <laughs> the decision comes as beauty brands receive backlash for their skin lightening products amidst ongoing protests for racial equality. <sighs> Industry leading French cosmetics company L'Oreal announced they will be removing words like whitening and lightening from their products after a number of beauty brands received backlash for their skin lightening products amidst ongoing protests for how, racial equality. How are you going to know what the product does? I that? don't know. I don't Is know. It Is it not a... supposed to do that? If it's not supposed to do that, then you, don't you have to remove the whitening part of the product? Shouldn't the whitening, whatever bleaching you got going on there, it it has to come out. Our, I'm sorry. Our society, Not just the word. Our society, it's over, man. We can't even Nuts. use words. Mm. 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 I go back to the Bee Gees, mm. who once said, it's only words, and words are all I have to take your heart. Away. That's good. So the BG says they, they say it's only words, mm-hmm. and words it, are all they have. But Extreme says it's more than words. I'm really confused now. That's yeah. So who do you believe? You believe Extreme, who lasted about two songs? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, what 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 are we what are we doing, man? I, what are we doing? 
uh, destroying our society, committing uh, societal su- suicide, yeah. perhaps. There's no coming back from this era. I'm sorry. Mm. We're mm. Good luck, kids. <laughs> Good luck. We left you a pile of garbage to sort through. Have fun with this society. Our friend John Ziegler uh, was speaking before the local city, his local city council. This is Los Angeles, right? Uh, yeah, he's in... out near there, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he's going off on his local city council, and uh, <laughs> here's what he had to say about Fauci and other After things. After waiting for two hours and now getting two minutes, I'll get right to the point. Uh, this board is pretending that for the last three months, your emperor, Dr. Levin, has not been against a mask declaration. Now, all of a sudden, we're pretending that masks are everything, even forcing speakers to use masks. I would like the board to take a position. Was Dr. Levin wrong for those three months? And if he was this wrong, why has he not been removed? Why has he not been fired for being so catastrophically wrong? Or do you not really believe he was wrong? You're just wearing these masks because it is a signal of your great virtue. Because for the last three months, we have not worn them. And... Ventura County has done outstandingly well and continues to do outstandingly well because we are not Los Angeles. We are not New York City. We never were going to be any of those things. Ironically, this is one of the few things Dr. Levin was actually right about. He has been wrong about everything. He is the one who told us we would have four to 600 hospitalizations a day. He, he, he revised that to two to 400 a day. We still haven't reached that in one day. We're barely over 200 for the entire ordeal that you guys have put us through. We now are panicked over 51 total hospitalizations in a county with eight hospitals. Can you people do math? Can you please do basic math and understand where we are on this? This is not a crisis. You, however, have created one. You, in an effort to try to prevent all death, when we've had 43 deaths, have now ended all relevant life. And you should all be nice. ashamed of yourselves. And this will never be forgotten. Ever be forgotten. You will all be held accountable eventually. In this life or the next. You all better it's hope tough. there is no hell. Because when you die, that's where you're going. And guess what? <laughs> you're not going to be dying of COVID either. Thank you. Uh, that's wow. Wow. John Ziegler is so great. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you better hope there's no hell. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm not your judge. I'm just saying you're going to burn in the fires of hell. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> That's basically and, what he was saying. And when you die, you're not going to be dying of COVID. <laughs> Such a great <laughs> He's minutes. a little pissed off. A little bit. So they had 51 hospitalizations, and they're freaked out. And they've got eight hospitals in the area. Come on now. It's so asinine. And then you've got people like Dick Vitale, oh, oh, who is ah. all holier than thou, all up in here, uh, about wearing masks. This is a basketball color commentator. And now he's a medical here, expert. Here we are. We're at Flavio's. Flavio's here at Siesta And as you can see, oh, well, you see, I can't understand it, though. Pause it for a second. And, say and it. you'll notice. Say it. Say it. He's not wearing his mask right. Thank you. And I'm sure he's. He, well, I it was in it. I just t- while I was talking. That's all. Uh-huh. While I was talking, I had to be more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you were talking your, is when it's most important. Yeah, your nose is hanging out, Dick. Come on, man. What are you doing there? All right. Let's see the rest. One. Number two, what about social distancing? <laughs> what about social distancing? But it's unreal how people got to follow the rules. Follow you the gotta rules. social distance, you gotta wear a mask, and you gotta wash these hands. We gotta find a way. Find a way to control this coronavirus that the upsurge here in Florida is been unreal. Bottom line is do those things, a lot of good things are happening. Here we are, don't see us to keep a beautiful place to be. We just took a little ride, and we just stood in the car, and we looked at the beach. All right, and enough. I can't beach, take it. Just I, just shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Gotta follow the rules, baby. Uh, if you want to wear a mask, that's great. Wear, wear a mask. mask. And if you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Just don't go around old people. I mean, these are the same people that 
that preach freedom of choice. My body, my choice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes, well, absolutely. Why does that not apply now? Because you could be affecting other people. Yeah, like like an abortion doesn't affect another person. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you know that some people go running with their dogs? Uh, nobody knows why. <laughs> and, and we... We've verified it's not necessarily because they're being chased, right? Not right. They're not being chased. No, they're just running. Okay, whatever. I mean, you know, the dog part. The dog does need the exercise sure. to stay healthy and stuff. But the people running? Why? The people have cars. Dogs dogs don't. I mean, they, they can get into the people's car. They can't drive themselves, so. Uh, anyway, other than the running and the walks and all the things that you need to do with your dog to keep them happy and healthy... They need vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and probiotics, omega oils, that kind of stuff. And they're not getting it from the dry kibble dog food because it's all burned out of it. So it lasts a long time on the shelf. Now, that's why I've been telling you about Rough Greens VitaSmart. That's not a dog food. It's a supplement you put into your dog's food, mix it in. They love the taste and it is really good for them. If you don't believe it, take the Rough Greens 14-day jumpstart challenge today for just $14.95 and see the difference in your dog in 14 days or less. If you want to see your dog thrive again, go to roughgreens.com slash blaze. That's R-U-F-F greens.com slash blaze. Can I just uh, take a minute and address this weird BuzzFeed article on Glenn and the cruise? Uh, I I don't know if they realize this. They don't seem to. Glenn didn't take the money here. In the cruise. You know, we all promoted it because this cruise, uh, these cruise people asked us to to do this cruise uh, with our listeners, which is not unusual. But we don't get the money for that. The money goes to the cruise line people. The article states, last June, Jeff and Jennifer Welliver heard about a cruise around the Mediterranean to be hosted by conservative radio host Glenn Beck and featuring other right-wing luminaries like Bill O'Reilly. Well, and me. Uh, Jeff, 68, a retired pharmacist, and Jennifer, 66, had never been on a cruise before. But they're conservatives. And this was Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly sponsored. And we thought it would be nice to be around like-minded people and not have to worry about political conversation or any innuendos. This was going to be our big fling, fling, and then it turned into a nightmare. Well, why? Um... If they're still going to do the cruise, and I believe that's the full intention here, is to do the cruise still, right? I mean, that's certainly my understanding is that it's probably postponed until at least the end of the year, probably till next spring. Uh, and this article goes on to blame, blame Glenn and him not saying any. He doesn't, what's he going to say? He doesn't know what to say. It's up to the cruise line to give them refunds. He can't do it. He doesn't have the money. The money did not go to Glenn Beck. Um, I guess they've set up a Facebook group to discuss it, and it's turned out to be a hotbed of pissed off people. Uh, Glenn said, my position is that anyone who wants a refund in these uncertain times should receive one. Right. And I've strongly encouraged the cruise lines, airlines, and the hotels to accommodate. But that's who got your money. The cruise line, the airlines, and the hotels. We don't have it here at the Blaze. It's not a Blaze cruise. He said, I look forward to going on this cruise through history when circumstances surrounding this global pandemic allow us to do so. Now, that's about all he can say because that's all we know right now. Uh, as the article goes on and on and on with a few angry customers who want their money back. Uh, Nancy... Nancy Clark, a travel agent who has two customers in this situation, said it's extremely unusual right now. These are older Americans who are just being told you're basically out of luck until we feel like doing this. Until we feel like doing this? What? There's no way to definitively schedule the cruise right now. They don't know when it will happen until the virus calms down. You know, there's still 43 thousand cruise employees stuck at sea <laughs> so until that stuff is resolved we don't know when the cruise is gonna is going to take place 
I certainly don't. And I don't think Cruise Builder knows. But for my, uh, as far as I understand, they're fully intending to do this again or to reschedule it when conditions allow. Now, if you if you don't want to go on the cruise and you want your money back, I mean, I fit with their schedule. You know, when they do reschedule right. it. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> uh, yes, I like Glenn. I think you should be able to get your money back if if that's what you want. And I do understand when people want their money back and they're pissed that they're not getting it yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't know what the circumstance is there exactly. Yeah, and there's a lot of money, too, that, that people are out right now. <clears> so. Yeah. And some, I mean, this couple said they spent $22,000. Well, that's tough that's a be, lot. That's a tough. That's a lot. Chunk of change to be without. Yeah. So, you know, just cool. But had we done the cruise, you would have been without it. Well, you would have at least had right. The but cruise. you would have had the cruise. Okay, yes, I, mean, I understand that. But I want to thank China yet again, going above and beyond and screwing up uh, the entire planet. Yes. Yes. Once again, another cruise uh, canceled for us. Uh, I've <laughs> I've right. two years in a row now. <laughs> I thought of two that. Yes. years in a row. We were ready to go on a cruise that we had privately planned. That wasn't a you know a sponsored thing mm-hmm. uh, to Alaska and other cool places. And uh, a family item came up that we the night before we were to leave on our cruise and we couldn't. And then uh, now we were ready to go on this Mediterranean cruise. Mm-hmm. And then of course COVID nineteen. Yeah, happened third time's a charm, right? They're canceled again. So so next time. <laughs> yeah, next time. Next time. Next time we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But again, 40,000 of these cruise employees are still on these ships out in the middle of the ocean. It's been over two months. It's going on three months, I think, for some of them. And they're just stranded out there. So things are just up in the air with that situation. And Glenn has zero control over any of it. 888 900 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Tweets here uh, at Pat Unleashed from Chicken to Tasty. <laughs> Not much worse on a Monday morning than a, than hearing a Hillary cackle. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> and hearing it that many times makes it all the more awful. <laughs> what are you gonna do though? You know, it just happens. <laughs> It just happens. It just happens? Yeah, every time I push the button, oh, it happens. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Huh. It just does. It you know, just happens. Okay. okay. <laughs> From uh, Carolina Bulldog. If you have to call the cops to show up to your anti-cop protest, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Also, we have this from uh, Richard S. Leitner. Minneapolis voting to get... Voting to get rid of their police is exactly what the Muslim community probably wants. Then they can implement Sharia law. Oh. Wake up America before it's too late. Oh, that's the town that did the <clears throat> um, the Muslim prayer calls during COVID-19. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. so they're like, oh, you can't get out of your house, so we'll just do... I wonder, if you live in Minneapolis, I'm just curious, uh, are they still doing those uh, calls to prayer? Uh, I'd like to know. Occam's electric razor, no police presence, means Paul Blart's time has come. Uh May he administer justice swiftly from his segue. (laughs) Uh, Black Lives Stammer uh, tweets, Minneapolis 911 call. Help, I've been robbed and shot. A social worker is on the way. Show me on this doll where the shooter hurt you. (laughs) (laughs) Eh, Man. Petty Officer America, I know exactly why there wasn't a virus spike in Helena, Montana. The virus has a hard time surviving when your city's air content is made up of more gun smoke than oxygen. Oh, mean streets. It's true. It's mm-hmm. true. Uh, Brian Moore, did Pat just say that if you don't wear a mask, you're a mask murderer? Did you Did you say that? Yes. Well, we'll just say yes, I did. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like it. I have Sheen Your Hernia tweets, <laughs> wait, what? Extreme had two songs? Huh. <laughs> yes. They had uh, more than words, which went to number one. And uh, Wholehearted, I think, was top five. That was a good one. Wholehearted. Then they also had Stop the World, uh, and I Want to Get Off. Remember that song? Yep. Yep. Went all the way to number 39 on the top 40 charts. 
Uh, let's see. We got the Steve 42. I'm old enough to remember when Idiocracy was just a funny movie, not a documentary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Help us. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Tony Fauci is speaking out again. You got to love this man. You have to. It's federal law that you must love him. Uh, he said he would settle for a COVID-19 vaccine that's 70 to 75% effective. But that's his, that's uh, incomplete protection, <laughs> coupled with the fact that many Americans say they won't get a coronavirus vaccine. So that makes it unlikely the U.S. will achieve sufficient levels of immunity to quell the outbreak. In other words, we're Good. screwed. So, Just yeah. go live your life. Right. I mean, right. I, and honestly, I mean, what is it? Until until we're all potential carriers, you know, until we're all dead, I guess that's when he's going to be satisfied. I, you know, there's nothing that satisfies this guy because mm. now, I mean, first it was flatten the curve, which we did, and now then it was <clears throat> now we got to get a vaccine or a cure of some sort, and now, now I don't yeah, know. now the vaccine won't work. I'm now sorry. we're just gonna have to. We're just gonna have to live this way the rest of our lives. Th- those who don't get the vaccine get killed. Um, I, I, mm-hmm. I have no idea what he wants next, but I would like to point out more important than Dr. Fauci mm-hmm. is the fact that Extreme is still, they're still going strong, man. What? They headlined. Um, Extreme broke up. Are they back together? I guess because they headlined huh? in twenty nine in October of last year. They performed in front of. Where is where is this? They were the headline at some festival or something, and uh, gosh, thirty thousand fans. I have to click on the hot link to find out where they were. 30,000 fans where is, showed uh, up for Extreme. Where is Ukrul? No idea. It's a state in India, I think. <laughs> the, so they're that big in India? So, huh. Seriously? Yeah, in India. So Extreme's still big. In India. In India. <clears throat> it's usually Japan. They and were, now it's uh, moved over to India, apparently. They were with uh, Nazareth. By the way, Nazareth at this at extreme. Uh, wow, at this concert, Nazareth must be what mid eighties, mid mid to late eighties, early nineties. Oh, yeah, the age of the uh, uh, of the band. Well, yeah, let's just find out here. Jeez, Nazareth. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, hold on. Uh, yeah, fifty four, fifty four, seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, se- mid seventies. Yeah. Um. God. And so with extreme, is it? Uh, is it what's his face? The you know the guy, their lead singer left and went and sang. Oh really? Two albums uh, with Van Halen, and then they fired oh, him. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, that's right. They, Van Halen had a falling out with Sammy Hagar, and then they got Gary Sharon. Gary Sharon, yeah. and so is he back together with Nuno Betancourt? And they're that's amazing. And 2007, mm-hmm. he reunited with Extreme. Okay, and wow. I guess he's still with them. And uh, rocking out arenas, rocking in India, thirty thousand people strong in the mountains of India. Nice, mm. that's impressive. Yeah, it is. I, that is, you know, after all those years, that's that's kind of cool. All right, uh, we got a sheriff in Washington who's uh, talking about the mask ordinance. Oh, oh Governor Inslee. Yeah, Man. Inslee's demand that everybody wear a mask. Public, yeah. Here's what he says. Uh, in case you guys didn't hear, Governor Inslee, in his infinite wisdom, has decided <laughs> after over 100 and some odd days that we should all wear face masks inside and out. And none of them are. <laughs> here's, here's what I say. Don't be a sheep. Yeah. Nice. Don't be a sheep. All right, mm. I'm done. <laughs> Lewis, County, <laughs> Lewis County, Washington Sheriff... Uh, it looks nice that down. nobody. Yeah. Well, okay, one or two. The one guy. There's yeah. like a couple people wearing masks. Everybody else barefaced, <laughs> which is like a political statement now. If you're barefaced, uh, you're, and I'm not trying to make a not, political not statement. I'm just gonna not live either. my life. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. you should be sorry. Cause... And if you're that concerned, then just stay <clears throat> home. No one's forcing you to go out and about. I know. I know. Mm. Also, there was this lady that was told she needed a mask when she got to the <laughs> checkout line. And she wasn't apparently exactly thrilled about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's here in Dallas. No, oh, is it? Yeah. Here you go. You can have this. I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> she is. She's not happy. <laughs> I mean, you, you did all the work to go shopping. You get that close, and then, then you just... Uh, she had a little fit, and then she left. Yeah. 
<laughs> you ever seen anything like that in public? Yeah, yeah every time every time a, a cashier gets chatty with me, they start, uh, So how's your day been going so far, sir? Oh, no. Shut up! What, and you just start How's flinging stuff out of the cart? <clears throat> oh, I see you got some steak here and some ice cream. You got some lead. You're going to have a little dinner tonight with some... I'm not going to talk to you about what I'm doing for dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. And then you just start flinging, oh, yeah? You then like I this start, steak? Then I you start see, flinging it. See this? Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't even want it anymore. The potato? Here. What are you, oh, yeah, I'm going to have a salad. Nope, you're going to have a salad. There you go. That's, That's how it do. goes. That's how it goes, exactly. Because she's just a chatty cashier making conversation with you mm-hmm. at the checkout? Yes. Okay. That's, that's right. I mean, you have principle. I don't like it. You know I don't like it. I'm just, I mean, I knew I you like didn't it. like it. I know you despised it. Wow. Yeah. that's. Uh, I don't want to talk to you about my day, and yeah. I don't want to talk to you about my purchases. Just do me a favor. Next time you do that, <laughs> start rolling on your phone so we have some uh, viral video. Are you playing Monopoly with us, sir? No, I'm not playing. Do you want to? No! If I wanted to, I'd be doing it. <laughs> All right. 888-900-3393. <laughs> Let me tell you about Omega XL. This stuff is awesome. Uh, it's not a drug, first of all. It's just all natural, and it's backed by 35 years of research. Omega XL attacks inflammation that causes pain, like the pain in my elbow that ran down my arm. Just miserable. Uh, but then you, the Omega XL starts to kick in, calm down the inflammation. You know, the NSAIDs that you take or the topical rubs that you use, I, I don't think those have ever. I don't think a topical rub has ever worked for me. But the NSAIDs, you know, can work sometimes, but they just, they just treat the symptom. They don't calm down the actual problem. And they can cause you problems with your kidneys, your liver, and they can have other side effects too. That's why this is so great. Uh, so if you're suffering with aches and pains, stiffness, try Omega XL. Also, it doesn't come with that fishy aftertaste you're burping up all day long. <laughs> so bad. And this, fortunately, is completely free of it. So we'll get you started. When you order one Omega XL bottle right now, you'll get a second bottle for free. OmegaXL.com slash Pat. That's OmegaXL.com slash Pat or 800-844-4888. Pat Gray Unleashed. All right just so much going on it's hard to know uh where to where to turn next mm. do you want me to spin um, the wheel of cancel or would that help <laughs> you decide no now the nba is uh is going to allow social justice messages now oh, on jerseys this is gonna be fun right isn't it <laughs> uh all the pro sports leagues now are gonna be all about social justice oh. you're not you're never gonna hear, hear the end of it you're never gonna I just saw where Carlos, um, ah, what's his face? What's his face? Carlos you know, from Hyde? The 90, yeah, oh. Carlos Hyde from the 68 Olympics. Isn't oh, that no, his name? No. No, no, no. He's a running back. Carlos. Okay, so it's Olympics, Carlos. 1968, black power guy. Oh, okay. It's, uh, sure, Carlos. Yes. It's <laughs> Carlos, the runner. You Google's know, the broken. 100 meter dash. I don't, I don't like this. Uh, Carlos leads U.S. call for scrapping protest ban. John Carlos. John Carlos. Okay. He le- <laughs> Yes, he's leading the ban on. He's trying to get the Olympics to allow protests uh, during the Olympic Games or the medal ceremonies. And when that happens, you've opened up a can of worms. That you just, I mean, we're never going to recover from that. No. The Olympics are going to be all protests all the time. That's going to be jammed down your throat every single Olympic event. Just like every game day now with the NBA is going to be all about justice, messages, kneeling. The f- whole focus is going to be not on the fun basketball part. Right. It's going to be on the social justice nonsense. And there's no national anthem at mm-hmm. Little League games. Uh, but I told my kids last night, I, I don't ever, I don't care if everybody on your team is doing it. Don't you dare kneel down mm. in some sort of whatever. I, I, I cannot just mm-hmm. imagine where this is going to end up. But um, yeah, good times, right? Good times. Good times. So NBA, NBA putting uh, social med- uh, messages. Messages. Yeah, on exactly. on their jerseys. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I saw that story <laughs> over the weekend, and I got to work. I came up with a few ideas in case some players want to 
Want to go ahead and uh, oh. maybe put a little... Do fun Planned Parenthood? Do fun Planned Parenthood. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that'll be the top of their list. Oh, there we go. Taxation is theft. Yeah, and then a little 2A for your uh-huh. uh, for your jersey number. And what else we got up there? We got, oh, free Hong Kong. I'm sure the NBA would love that message. With oh, the, well, LeBron already proved he loves uh-huh. that message, right? Chi- Chinese lucky number eight uh, as okay. your jersey number. So Good. I would love to see that. I, 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 as soon as you start seeing messages like that, it takes one player to do free Hong Kong, <laughs> and the NBA will, will, will stop this madness. Or they'll just ban that phrase. That's for sure. Yeah, you jump into their China uh, profit margin, and they'll put a stop to it quick. They've already done that, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> I can't so. wait. I just can't wait until... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, is everybody going to have Black Lives Matter? Is, everybody, is that, I mean, that going to be just I'm everybody's sure. last name? Probably, uh, probably. It'd probably just be that. Yeah. Well, the soccer players were going for that. Was that the women's soccer league? There was some soccer league yeah. that wanted their last name to be. It's like Bob Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That'll be good. <laughs> Seriously, I love that. Uh, what's that? What's that, Rob? It was MLS. MLS. Oh, that's a great league. Major League Soccer. Yeah. Also, uh, BLM protesters are calling for an end to not racism. <clears throat> but capitalism. <laughs> I mean, racism too, but... Oh, sure. Listen to this. Listen. Abolish <laughs> capitalism. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Abolish capitalism now. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got what does that have to do with Black Lives Mattering? Huh. <clears throat> Abo- Abolish capitalism. What does that have to do with Black Lives Mattering? Huh. <laughs> with racism. Hmm. With uh, police brutality, what what does capitalism have to do with any of that? Well, their their true colors are shining through. Good stuff. Yep. And that's why I don't love them. So what what, what if an NBA player wants abolish capitalism now on their jersey? Are they going to allow that? No, oh, sure. Why? Oh. That's not a problem. I mean, of course, I that's fine. The NBA. Kidding me? Excels because of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I can't. It's just. Uh there is some hope, though. Uh, we have this group of uh, black men who are actually prote- protecting mm-hmm. the emancipation statue from being pulled down over the miss. weekend. The outrage over this statue is and, ridiculous. Because uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, she, this black lady, this young black lady is going to teach these old black guys something, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Why are you protecting this statue, she said. Stop screeching and maybe you'd learn yeah. something, Puddin. He says you don't know history. What is you know the history? Why? Why? Who paid for it? I love that question. Who paid for it? Who paid for it? Who paid for the statue? Like you don't know. Who paid for it? Who paid for it? So why are we fighting? Who paid for it? Why are we fighting? You look just like me to be the world. You're why are you fighting me? You are fighting. Fighting because because Douglas, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer has Why are you fighting me? I'm not fighting you. I'm not fighting you. Here's the thing. You know what Look, here's the thing. Any she, you can't. You can't talk okay, to him. I can't take. It. I know. I can't you, you can't. You can't talk to him. But oh but he asked gosh. a good question. The old black guy, uh, who paid for it. So I did a little googling. She doesn't care who paid. for No. It. Well, can I can I tell the people that might care? Because um, the memorial was paid for with funds Slaves. donated by African Americans, many of them formerly enslaved and veterans mm-hmm. of the United States Colored Troops. Um, look at that. A woman named Charlotte Scott used her first five dollars earned in freedom to kick off the fundraising campaign. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. She it, just it matter. keeps screeching mm-hmm. at the top of her lungs because she doesn't care. She doesn't want to know. She doesn't, she doesn't want to understand actually what's actually going on there and what that, what that statue represents and yeah. what it's all about. She mm-hmm. doesn't care. That statue of Lincoln is the only Lincoln statue that um, was paid for by those who had directly benefited from Lincoln's act of emancipation. Jeez. But don't try to have that conversation because she does not want to. She doesn't want to hear it. Uh, It's just, it's madness. And I think it's great how that statue, the reason it is remaining in the news is because people are out there protecting it around the clock. Yeah. To keep it from falling over, being being taken down. And thankfully, that's that's a place where they've drawn a line in the sand and said, no, you're not having this statue. Back off. And it means so much more that it's sure does. It's the black community protecting that statue. That's awesome. In D.C., a communist leader is uh, teaching his comrades 
how to bathe properly too. <laughs> so this is. I don't know what this is. This is good. Showering. Showering. Do not shower. Do not shower. Hot water. Hot water. Hot water. Hot water. That will burn. That will burn. No, it will burn. Wash. Wash. Why are we with cold water? Cold water. With cold water. Why are we? Because we can't? at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day. You don't want to open your pores. You don't want to open your pores. <laughs> <laughs> what is? Your house is wonder. Why are you screaming in the bathroom? Why are you screaming in the bathroom? Because it burns. Oh, so if they get hit with tear gas or something. You're gonna wash your clothes. Do separate them. Oh, separate your whites and your reds. Wash them with baking soda. I always wash them twice. I always wash them twice. It never comes out the first time. It never comes out the first time. Also, if you. Okay. Uh, okay, cause communists never bathe. <laughs> cause communists never bathe. I'm gonna teach you how to do it now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach, teach you how, how to, to do, do it, it now. When you're out protesting and you get maced. When, you when you're out, out protesting, protesting and you get maced. Don't shower with hot water. Don't shower with, with hot, hot water. water. <laughs> communists are filthy anyway, cause they usually stink. They don't oh. have jobs because they're supported by the state. Okay, okay. Communists. Supported by the state. <laughs> there I am. I got it. Nailed it. <laughs> it's insanity. It's absolute insanity. <laughs> I love that, though. That's, uh, that's important information right there. Mm -hmm. It's important information. Oh, spin the wheel of cancel one more time before oh, okay. we... Uh, we're done for the day. Where's the uh, four? There it is. Yeah, what do you? Let's. I'm gonna spin the wheel. Wheel of cancel. Wheel of cancel. Four. <laughs> All right. There's a comedian, uh, Graham Linehan, known for creating the It Crowd and co-creating Father Ted, has been permanently suspended from mm. Twitter. After allegedly making multiple transphobic comments. Transphobic. Okay. You wouldn't believe what he said. What's his name again? Graham Linehan. Don't know him, but... Okay. I am not familiar with him either, uh -huh. but he's been canceled, fortunately. Because get this. Um, reports from The Guardian and the Irish Post newspapers <clears throat> say his account was closed. After the comedian reportedly tweeted, get this. Okay, here we go. Well, men aren't women, though. Unquote. <laughs> whoa! Wow. Whoa, whoa, wow. whoa! Wow. That was in response now to a tweet by the Women's Institute wishing Happy Pride Month to its transgender members. And, and so his response to that was, well, men aren't women, though. Ah, whoa, the humanity. Oh, oh, no. So wait a minute. How is J.K. Rowling still <laughs> active on Twitter? Because, you know, she says the same thing. Basically, she did, didn't right. she? And then people are They're leaving. They're calling for a, pro for, for a boycott of her as well. Yeah, the, the people have left her agency. I guess her talent agency. Oh, yeah. Yep. Because. Because she's part of it, how, right? How dare, how dare you say <laughs> men are men and women are women. And this is this is the psychotic left eating their own. This is a woman who is completely liberal in virtually every way. She just says that women are women and men are men, and it does matter what's in your pants. I'm sorry. It it goes <laughs> beyond how you identify. It goes to what you actually have underneath. And that was just unacceptable to liberals. It's really amazing. Uh, they want, they're boycotting her books. I mean, she's already sold 500 million copies. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably doing okay, okay but. You boycott that <laughs> series. Got it. <laughs> yeah. The damage is already done on the Harry Potter thing, kids. So, <laughs> but will they boycott her upcoming movies? She's got more of those. Uh, oh, the beasts. Stuff? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Crap. Yeah. Means my kids are going to want to watch those. Uh-huh. Whatever. They surely are. Uh, hey, but I got some good news about this week, right? Okay, so uh, Tuesday, uh, when we when we cross over from Tuesday into Wednesday, we will be on the other side of the mountain that is 2020. The year 2020 will be half over, 
So. And that means what exactly? That know, means everything's less... going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's what that means. Yeah, it means okay. less than half of this huh. crazy year left to go. Yeah, I'm just help me find a silver lining somewhere. Uh, there's not very many. No, um, I love this story as well. Oregon and Oregon State in football, you know, well, and basketball, all their series. Uh, they they're no longer going to call their rivalry the Civil War. Why? I, I it reminds people of. The Civil War, uh, I guess, which was the war that ended slavery, by the way. Why don't you want to be reminded of that? That's just unbelievable. None of this makes any sense. This is a fun time to be alive, is it not? Oh, it's the best. It actually is. It's the best. Oh, yeah. And the worst. Both at the same time. Uh, all right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Oh, we got a short week. Uh, Jeffy's going to oh, be yeah. here uh, Wednesday and Thursday this week. It's very exciting. Uh-huh. And of course, we'll, we'll be fo- celebrating the Fourth of July. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.